It's no secret that cardio exercises like running and cycling are great for overall health and weight management. The way cardio impacts muscle growth, however, is far more complex. That's why in this video, I'm going to share five things no one tells you about cardio and muscle growth. So if your goal is to build muscle maximally while also experiencing the various health benefits of cardio, then listen up. Because mixing cardio and lifting can either destroy your ability to build muscle completely or it can accelerate muscle growth and push your physique to the next level. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Number 1. Cardio May Slow Down Gains Resistance training has three distinct goals speed, strength, and size. Speed training involves explosive movements. Strength training focuses on heavy lifting, and size training emphasizes muscle tension. And some people include cardio alongside these specific types of training with the aim of getting the best of both worlds, improved cardiovascular fitness, and becoming either more powerful, stronger, or more jacked. But here's the dilemma. Researchers have found that doing Doing cardio and resistance training together might actually reduce neuromuscular adaptations compared to resistance training alone. One meta-analysis that analyzed 21 different research papers consistently discovered that when compared to resistance training alone, integrating cardio and resistance training together led to smaller improvements in muscle growth, strength, and power. Not only that, but they observed the trend where more frequent and longer cardio sessions negatively impacted the intended adaptations further. As with many things in fitness, however, the truth is not black and white. Which brings me to point number two. Cardio does not kill muscle growth. Many studies have found that while power decreases from concurrent cardio and lifting, hypertrophy is either the least affected or not affected at all. This study from the European Journal of Applied Physiology, for example, found no difference in muscle growth in both lifting only and cardio and lifting together. That said, the rate of force development, or power, was unimproved in the group that combined cardio and weightlifting. Another study comparing female endurance athletes and untrained women where both groups followed the same strength training program but the endurance athletes also performed running and cycling found that there were no differences in muscle growth and strength between the groups. The endurance athletes, however, did experience smaller gains in power compared to the untrained group. With that in mind, it's safe to say that cardio affects neuromuscular adaptations in power and strength more than it does hypertrophy. And while cardio can affect muscle growth to some extent, the magnitude of its effects depend on the modality, frequency, and duration of the endurance training. Number 3. You must find the right balance. Research highlights that aerobic exercises can bring about CNS fatigue, which gradually increases during the workout and lingers for about 24 hours afterward. When it comes to resistance training, according to this study, fatigue also accumulates throughout a training session, explaining the drop in set volume when training to failure. When central fatigue sets in, your brain downregulates the size and speed of neural signals that activate your muscles. This impairment diminishes your capacity to recruit a high number of motor units, essentially reducing muscle activation. In other words, as fatigue increases, muscle activation decreases. From a muscle growth perspective, this decreased muscle activation translates to fewer muscle fibers experiencing the growth stimulus from training. Keep in mind, the key to optimal muscle growth is having a substantial number of muscle fibers experiencing mechanical tension. Therefore, the reason cardio might hinder muscle growth likely stems from the combined CNS fatigue resulting from cardio and strength training. Engaging in both activities exhausts your nervous system to a greater extent, leading to even greater reductions in muscle fiber recruitment and activation, resulting in submaximal gains. To put it simply, it's not the cardio itself that is hurting your ability to build muscle. Instead, it's the 
increase fatigue caused by doing too much of it. Number four, not all cardio is created equal. While too much cardio can impair muscle growth, when approached wisely, cardio can actually accelerate your progress. It bolsters cardiovascular health, expedites recovery, and promotes nutrient transport to your muscles. But the type of cardio you choose matters. Personally, I recommend avoiding forms of cardio that take longer to recover from and increase CNS fatigue to a greater extent. First, skip the eccentric movements. Avoid cardio exercises like long distance running, plyometrics, and jump ropes. These types of cardio put extra stress on your muscles and nervous system, further impeding recovery. According to this study, eccentric training incurs muscle damage and creates sustained high levels of CNS fatigue for extended periods of time. I'd also recommend avoiding high-intensity interval training, specifically on days where you're also lifting weights. Instead, opt for low-intensity, steady-state cardio like incline walking, cycling, or using the elliptical. This will ensure you achieve your physique goals without compromising your lifting performance. For instance, the meta-analysis I mentioned earlier indicated that cycling alongside weight training had less of a negative impact on lower body hypertrophy compared to running. If you look at cycling, you can see that it's a primarily concentric activity, very low impact and can be done at a consistently slow pace, thus making it far less fatiguing. Remember, if you want to experience the benefits of cardio without impairing your ability to build muscle, it's imperative that you choose the type of cardio that's easiest to recover from. And number five, timing matters. One study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that when cardio is done immediately before a resistance training session, lifting performance is significantly compromised. To be precise, pre-lifting cardio protocols resulted in 9.1 to 18.6% fewer repetitions performed compared with the control group. Simply put, performing any type of cardio before a lifting session will result in a decrease in performance. Performing cardio immediately after lifting, however, may also negatively influence muscle hypertrophy. One study published in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine compared two groups. One group who performed cardio immediately after lifting, and another group who separated their cardio and lifting sessions. They found that the group who separated their cardio and weightlifting into separate days experienced more than double the muscle muscle growth. Not only that, but separating cardio and lifting sessions also resulted in greater increases in strength. The question then becomes, how many hours apart should cardio and resistance training be separated? One study comparing the training adaptations from 0, 6, and 24 hour separation of strength and aerobic workouts found that while 6 hours was better than 0, training twice per day was not optimal for neuromuscular and aerobic aerobic improvements. And while a 24-hour separation between cardio and resistance training may be best, this may not be practical for most trainees. In that case, aim to separate your cardio and lifting sessions by a minimum of 6 hours. So there you have it. 5 Things No One Tells You About Cardio and Muscle Growth While excessive amounts of cardio or strenuous aerobic exercise can negatively impact muscle growth, performing the right type of cardio at the right time could actually improve your muscle building capabilities. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter who's looking to get absolutely shredded without cutting out your favorite foods or doing hours of cardio each week, grab a copy of my brand new program, Shredded 12 Fat Loss. This is the only science-based fat loss program of its kind that protects your hard-earned muscle mass and strength and gives you a shredded physique in just 12 weeks. And right now, you can get an additional 25% off by using the coupon code RIPPED25. If you want to learn more, click the link in the description below.
And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.